Well, since I did that video talking about how the Hawks were struggling, they've been nearly unbeatable. And I want to start with Trey Young. He could be having his best regular season so far. It's the best combination of his scoring and efficiency that we've seen. And really what I'm saying is his three-point shooting has been way better. He's at nearly 40% from three right now. I mean, I talk about how his three-point percentage is great. His mid-range percentage is awesome as well. He's over 50% from mid-range, and he is shooting more long twos. And as far as how he's been doing it, I mean, it's a lot of pick and roll still. He's averaging about 14 a game, according to NBA.com. He's also having his most efficient season as a passer so far. His turnovers are down compared to his last two years, and his assists are as great as ever. And it's a pretty obvious formula. You get him a screen up top, you get him going downhill, and just allow him to make the right decision. It also helps when you have two very good dive guys, one Capella that we've already seen, and of course John Collins. And I feel like I've said this about Collins, I don't know, three or four times now this season, but his fit in this offense is just seamless. All he has to do is set screens and play hard, and he can get himself to at least 15 points. Now, I do want to talk about their offense some more, but let's touch on the defense for a bit, because it's been way better in the last nine. And a big reason for that is their three-point defense. Teams have been shooting in the low 30s against them from outside recently. It is a bit of a debate in super nerdy basketball circles if you can really control your opponent three-point shooting. In theory, the way to do it would be leaving Josh Richardson a little open as you load up inside and getting a closeout on him. And I think that willingness to load up inside has led to their inside defense being a bit better. I mean, remember earlier in the season, teams were shooting 75% at the rim against them or whatever, and there's just no way you can have a good defense with that. Well, recently it's been around 60%, and that's cool. I think the interesting thing within that is that they've been able to do it with different lineups, some of it is Capella and Collins. Some of it is just one of them in the game. Now, speaking of Capella, nearly every number and eye test that I can attempt suggests that he's rounding back into form. He was a little slower to open up the season, but he's been playing a lot of minutes and the Hawks are a top 10 defense in their last nine games. And that's not just on defense, of course. He's had a number of 20-point games. The Hawks need Capella to be awesome. Now, back to their offense. You remember that whole thing about how they were shooting too many mid-range and not enough threes? Well, to be honest, it's still happening, but they're shooting so well on jump shots that it doesn't matter. And when we're talking about mid-range, the guy I want to mention is Kevin Herter, who manages to be one of the most interesting guys in the league who only averages about nine points a game. Anyway, on to my Celtics, who continue to confuse me. Time Lord and Horford were all over Embiid. Check this one out again. Definitely an opportunity to get that to Tobias. And now here is another Horford, Embiid possession, Ennis Freedom. Yeah, Cantor's name change is official now. He's going to dig in, and Embiid is going to say there's a foul. I don't know. Embiid bailed out Freedom a few times with just a face-up jumper rather than really going at him. Now, I guess if they go in, then you don't have much to complain about as a Sixers fan, but they did not go in in this game. Now, Embiid did have six assists, but they were more from these type of actions and not so much when the Celtics brought two against him on the ball. Speaking of assists, Marcus had eight, and Marcus's passing has been kind of really good. He's up to basically six assists a game, and he's actually a little under two turnovers a game. And it was really nice to see Time Lord back because he and Smart have the same brain sometimes. Now let's head to Cleveland, Miami, and not pay attention to Evan Mobley, even though this is his assist. Let's talk about Jared Allen. The contract is looking pretty good. He's shooting 70% from the field. And this is a nice little play. Mobley sets a screen for him, and then you see the signs of a post game really developing for Allen. And as you're looking at some Jared Allen block shots, let me read a stat for you. When Jared Allen and Evan Mobley are in the game together, the Cavs' defensive rating is 97, which would be first in the league if a team did it for a whole season. Anyway, Mobley was switched on to Hero, and, I mean, Tyler Hero, you, you just had no shot here, man. I mean, Mobley was still there with him. Jared Allen's right there at the basket. I mean, good luck. Now on to the real story of the NBA. The Rockets have won four games in a row. Jay Sean Tate had 32 in this one. It's the return of Daniel Tice. Screens for Garrison Matthews. Get him moving. Nice bounce pass with Tate in the dunker spot. It's good stuff. And then Tate whipped out all the fundamentals for this basket over Baisley. It looked like he was done, man, and then he just hoists up that left-handed hook shot. 
Also, to continue the Armani Brooks storyline, he was four for seven from three in this one. Giannis puts the Bucks up too, and nobody in the paint. Let's get Giannis ahead of steam, and let's just dare them to try to get in front of him. And well, nobody can anymore. So there you go. Oh yeah, the Bam injury. How many people saw this tweet and immediately thought ACL, and your heart just dropped for a second? Still, he's gonna be out for a while, so that's not fun. The Bulls and the Heat have to forfeit their next available second rounder. Yeah, this pretty much says if you want to tamper, go ahead and do it. I mean, maybe if you're a bad team or you have like a really good second rounder, then it might freak you out. MRI confirms Dame lower ab thing. Watching Blazers games this year, there's been moments where it seems like he's grimacing and kind of holding some part of his midsection and 